Ready to go? Okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone, to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for Tuesday, August 7th, 2018. Uh, the board previously met in executive, dis in executive session. Uh, to discuss contract negotiations, litigation, and real property. Um, we will open our public session as usual with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I see we have some Girl Scouts here, so would they please come up and lead us in the pledge? Where's the flag? Oh, it's over there. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> new, new. I haven't been here in a while. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'd like to welcome everybody back to Town Hall. It's been a really, really long time. I think the last time we had a Board of Selectmen's meeting in this room was in April of 2017, about 16 months ago. So uh, many thanks to everyone who's participated in making, uh, getting us back home. All the hard work and all the forbearance of the townspeople of the town hall employees and staff. I can remember at one point uh, Mr. Kamalo's office was a chair in the corner of the fire station. <laughs> so we've come a long way. So welcome home to everybody. We will start our evening uh, as we always do with our public forum and residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anyone here who would like to come up uh, and make public comment? Uh, Ms. Wright, through you, if I could just build on what you just had said, uh, I think we need to take a second and thank Bob and everyone at HCAM for all the hard work that they did putting us up down there for the last year and a half. So thank you very much for all the adjustments and everything that you guys did to make us feel Absolutely. cooler than we are tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back anytime. <laughs> we noted. Thank you. No takers for public comment tonight. Okay. Well, in that case, although we usually move right to our consent agenda, we couldn't wait. We have something better than consent agenda. Uh, we're very honored tonight to have a Girl Scout Gold Award two to be given to Melissa Hayes and to Grace Darkow. The Board of Selectmen will recognize the Girl Scout Gold Award member uh, recipients, Melissa Hayes and Grace Darkow of Girl Scout Troop 72233 for projects which inspired STEM interests in young girls. And Karen Bograd has been their Girl Scout Troop leader. And I just want to say before um, you ladies come up, I've participated in a lot of Boy Scout uh, Eagle Awards, which is an amazing feat, an amazing ceremony. And I know that the Girl Scouts, this is their version of the Eagle Award. And we haven't had very many of them. It's a huge accomplishment. Um, and so I just think this is, I wish there were the same kind of ceremony for the Girl Scout Gold Awards that there are for the Eagle Scouts, but I, so I want everyone to understand tonight what a really, really special event this is and a, an enormous accomplishment um, for these young women. So 
Having said that, um, I've read quite a bit about what they've done, but I think it's better if uh, you put it in your own words, ladies. Um, so why don't we have you one at a time, if you would come up and just tell us a bit about what you did for your Gold Award project, and maybe we will start with Melissa Hayes. You can just come right up here, have a seat. No, don't be afraid. <laughs> See, there's a microphone there. You sit right there and uh, tell us what you did, because I know, but nobody else does. Keep going. Tell us some more. So they took they took part in a um, com a sumo competition where they had to knock other robots off a um, field, and the last person stand last robot standing won. And they worked in like teams of three or four. Excellent. And how long and how long did this take for you to complete? Um, I'm not actually sure. It's been like. Starting since last year, I think. It was, a se it was many months, though. It was several months project. Yeah. And um, you worked with the high school instructor, Mr. Scott, I believe? Yes. And I mm -hmm. understand that your project has been so successful that um, you're passing it along to others who are going to continue this. Yeah, other high school students will be continuing the program in future years and all like the um, high school robotics program has all of like the materials for each year so it can be picked up at any point. Excellent. Board members, do you have some some questions or comments for Melissa? Mr. Herr. I think this is great Melissa. Congratulations on all your hard work and achieving this award. Uh, we've been doing this a, a number of years and a number of uh, Scouts, Girl Scouts that achieve this is, is not as many as we would like. So mm -hmm. for you to be here tonight with your friend and, and achieve this is really very, very cool. And I'm very excited to see two young ladies here getting such a great award. Thank you. Great job. The dead stuff. Yeah, I feel the same way. Congratulations. Uh, it's not a surprise knowing the, the uh, household you come from. They're pretty much, pretty <laughs> much uh, you know, geared towards doing stuff for the town. So. Congratulations, good work, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. So I actually have a couple of questions. How many students participated? Um, there was 11 girls in my program. Okay. And are, are there any people you want to give a shout out to that, that, that helped you along, that maybe um, some uh, places in town that may have helped out, any stores or something else that may have helped you do stuff that you want to give a shout out to? That, uh, Mrs. Bograd helped out a ton, and um, Mr. Scott, he was my um, content advisor, so he helped out a lot too. Congratulations. Congratulations, Melissa. <coughs> I think it's really impressive to see uh, older generation children helping younger children to move on and encourage them to the engineering field. Um, and it, what I've been truly impressed about this is that this is a situation where you and start out with a project and have a competition and it seems, it seems incredible. I'm really impressed. Congratulations. Fantastic job. Have you watched the Battle of the Bots? Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have that when I went to <laughs> You should be on that show. <laughs> well, we're really proud of you, Melissa. And, um, and I understand that your colleague Grace has done, also done a STEM project with a different age group. So if um, you don't have more that you want to tell us right now, maybe Grace would come up and tell a bit about her project as well. Grace? Um, so my project was to teach young girls um, in first grade about engineering. So I taught them about like the engineering design process. Um, I also taught them about sorry, um, other female engineers, and I led them through with my mentors a whole bunch of different activities where they built things and used engineering, um, such as like building like a toy or building a small house. 
And, and this was what age group? Um, first grade girls. Wow. So um, that was a, a kind of a challenging group to, to focus this with. So they actually were able to construct some things and, and learn your engineering principles. Yeah. I used a lot of like matching games and stuff and like all the activities. There was like three for like building activities so they could like move on really quickly. Had you worked with that age group before? So that was a challenge. Huh? <laughs> How many kids did you have in your program? Um, I had 16 girls. Oh, all, no, all, all at one time? Oh, boy. <laughs> and, um, and this took you how long? Uh, several months? Um, yeah, so my program was only a month, though. Um, but I've been working on it since the beginning of last year. Excellent. And did I read, I believe, that like Melissa's program, the school's going to try to keep this keep this going um, in some form. Uh, yeah, I made a binder. Um, I also made a PowerPoint that I posted online for other people so that they can recreate everything that I did from like the matching games and the binder has things like where to get a place in our own town, get volunteers and everything. That that's awesome. You know, so often you hear from people that's that have achieved great things and you'll say well how did you get started and it will go back to something that impressed them at a very very young age it's not necessarily a decision they made a life decision they made in high school and college it's something some person that took the time to work with them or, or was a role model in in this young age group so i, I think that can really have lasting benefits and uh, i just think it's great that you found a way to give this really important message to young women at this very young, uh, really impressionable, um, important age. So that is, that's a wonderful project, and uh, I'd be an interested to see the kind of things the kids, the kids did. I'll bet, uh, I'll bet they had a good time with you. Other board members? She gives them a big jump start, and I'll tell you, those kids are going to remember you. Oh my God. When you when they're your age, they're going to remember you. And I'm willing to bet they're going to reference everything that you've taught them. Um, I think it's fabulous. I think you've done a great job, and uh, I want to thank you for it. Well, as a, as a retired mechanical engineer, I, I was inspired um, by a, um, an engineer that lived across the street from me, and um, that Todd. No, when I was, when I was younger, he <laughs> saw um, and, uh, yeah, and, and it really, it absolutely changed my life, having somebody that, that was just a mentor to me. And, and, I, I, and I, I believe I did the same thing with my younger daughter, who's now applying to schools for, for engineering also. So it's, just, it's great, not just, not just for girls, but just for, for, for anybody, you know, to, to inspire uh, young people to actually go into engineering because it's a, it's a, a field that the, that the country absolutely needs. And uh, congratulations, great job. Yeah, so uh, as someone with a young daughter, I will tell you that it's nice to have people like you where, uh, where, where someone like my daughter can look up to people like you rather than when we were kids, the people we looked up to, much different population. Um, it's nice that you guys lead by example, uh, that engineering, process was, sounds pretty interesting. Uh, thank you for, for doing what you did and, and uh, keep on keeping on. So it sounds like we have two engineers uh, on the board right now. I studied mechanical engineering as well and I was inspired by my father. I was told by my father that I would study engineering. Uh, I'm glad I did because I went in right into technical sales coming out of engineering school and had a great career. Uh, unlike Mr. Catino, I'm not retired in it, however, unfortunately. I've got a ways to go. But it's great that you're inspiring young girls to do this. I think uh, the more women we can get into the science and technology and engineering uh, fields, uh, the better off we'll all be. So well done. The other point I'd want to make to both of you is you're coming here and you're sitting in front of that microphone and you're seeing yourself on TV and the chair's grilling you with questions and everything. And you guys both did an excellent job public speaking here tonight. So well done. Another great skill that you're learning 
and uh, I think it'll play out well for you in the years to come. So great job tonight. Thank you. Well, we are just delighted with both your accomplishments, and we do have certificates of acknowledgement for both of you from the Board of Selectmen for your accomplishment. But before we present those to you, I want to hold off for just a minute on this because, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this there is not the same type of a ceremony that the Eagle Scouts give. Um, so this is our big opportunity in town to honor these Girl Scouts. And um, I believe that we have here tonight the Eastern uh, Girl Scout Association leader who is here and who would like to give both Melissa and Grace their pins for receiving their gold award. So if you would please come up, we're delighted to have this opportunity. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Guess so. Uh, so thank you and good evening. My name is Danielle Baltinos. I'm the Director of Volunteer Engagement at Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts. Um, and I'm honored to be here tonight with all of you, fine young ladies and all of uh, their family and friends. Um, we were invited to Hopkinton tonight to recognize these two outstanding young women who've earned the gold award in your community. The Gold Award is our most prestigious award in Girl Scouts. Starting in 1916, the best and brightest undertook sustainable projects that improve their communities in the world. The Gold Award has inspired girls to find greatness inside themselves and share their ideas and passions with their communities. Over the past 100 years, those who have earned the highest award in Girl Scouting reflect the vision of our, our movement's founder, Julia Gordon Love. Julia believed deeply in the importance of giving back to one's community <coughs> and sought to inspire the same in others. Nationally, only 13% of girls ages 14 to 17 earn the gold award. So we're very excited to be able to celebrate the work of two Hopkinton Girl Scouts who are joining those prestigious ranks as both gold award Girl Scouts. Grace Darko and Melissa Hayes have demonstrated extraordinary leadership in making a difference in their community with measurable take action projects. Gold Award projects address a wide range of issues, from poverty to health to community history, the environment, and children. Grace's project, Engineering for First Grade Girls, and Melissa's project, Girl Robotics and Female Empowerment Program, provided excellent opportunities for young girls in STEM-related topics. Today, they join 10 other Girl Scouts who have successfully completed their Gold Award in your community since 2000. So we know that many of you also stood beside Grace and Melissa at helping them with their projects, We'd also like to take a moment to pause and thank you as well for all of you. It is my honor to present citations to each of you from United States Senator Elizabeth Warren, Massachusetts Senator Karen Kosha, and Massachusetts Representative Carolyn Dikema. Um, now we'd also like to invite Karen Obrad, Grace and Melissa's troop leader, to come up to help actually present the things to the girls.
Europeans, aren't they? <laughs> Those of you, oh, oh, yeah. well, we're, we'll have some photos, and we've got our, our, our certificates we want to give you, but I want to also mention for people watching at home to understand uh, this doesn't happen without really strong mentoring and really strong leadership, and um, Karen Bograd is not any ordinary scout leader. She has mentored these girls for, I believe it's the past 13 years. She's held this Girl Scout troop together and kept these girls engaged in scouts. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we have not had very many girls in Hopkinton achieve this highest award. And uh, a lot of that credit has to go to their outstanding leader. Karen also has uh, led Boy Scouts as well, uh, shepherded a number of young men into their Eagle Award, including her own son, Nick, about four years ago. So uh, there's, this is why the girls honor Karen as well this evening. So we are so proud to have you, Karen, as a part of our, our community and for all these girls have done. And we have now, we have certificates that we would like to present to Melissa and to Grace. If um, you'd like to come up, I have, I will read this. From the town of Hopkinton, the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen hereby recognizes Gold Award recipient Melissa Hayes um, and Grace Darkow, Girl Scout Troop 72233, Hopkinton Mass, Girl Scouts of America, Therefore, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join with Melissa and Grace's family and friends in recognition of their achievement in attaining, attaining the rank of Gold Award, signed under our hand and seal this 7th day of August, 2018, Claire Wright Chair, Brian Herr, Selectman, Irfan Nasrula, Selectman, Brendan Tedstone, Vice Chair, and John Coutinho, Selectman. Congratulations, ladies. This is for Melissa, and this is for Grace. And as a special surprise, we also have a certificate of appreciation for Karen, if you would come up as well. Thank you Thank very you. much. You are cleaning up. And maybe we can get some photographs now. Yep. There you go. I was taking my own. Right. Shall we pose over here, maybe underneath the, the quilt? Under the flag. The flag, okay. Oops, oops, oops. I know. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough room, Brian? What do you think? Hold the quilt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. That was 
worth running a little late for, believe me. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll now move our, to our, um, our consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to just mention there is a public hearing we have posted for 715. This is a posted public hearing for Hoppington Friendly Services Incorporated, Section 15 Package Store Wine and Malt License for 92 West Main Street. Um, Madam Chair, I move that we open the public hearing. All right. Um, second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye and opposed, it's unanimous. The public hearing is opened. Um, we have a consent agenda ahead. So if it's acceptable to you, we will hold off on that and just go through our consent agenda items and then return to the public hearing. Have I done that correctly? Okay, okay thank you very much. Um, these are the, the following are consent agenda items. Board minutes, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving the July 10, 2018 Board of Selectmen minutes. Item two, resignations. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the following resignations. Austin Spang from the Hopkinton Historical Commission and Jessica Fleet from the Board of Appeals. 2018, item three, 2018 state primary warrant. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving and signing the 2018 state primary warrant. Item four, entertainment special temporary alcohol license, Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event, Western Nurseries at 93 East Main Street. Um, and the fifth item, which is listed on the agenda, has been withdrawn, uh, alcohol license for uh, St. John's Parish. So, would anyone like to pull out any of these consent items for special discussion? I would like to pull out item four, please. Item four for Mr. Ted Stone. And I'd like to pull out item two just to make sure that we say Item two an extra for big Mr. Catino. I have one small comment on the board minutes, item one. So. Madam Chair, I move that we approve item three of the consent agenda to uh, approve and sign the 2018 state primary warrant. Second. All right, the motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor of approving the item three 2018 state primary warrant, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Okay, going back to item one board minutes, uh, just one comment. Um, I would like to see in the discussion about the planning board appointment, perhaps a note clarifying that in the first round of voting, um, there was a requirement for, I believe it was six vote. There were 11 in present, and I think it was six votes that were yeah, we required. Seven. We seven. Or was it seven? Was it? Because if you count up the votes, uh, there was four for one candidate and three for the other. So just make it clear that there was a seven vote needed, not just a simple, uh, the highest vote getter. Madam Chair, I approve the Move to approve the Board of Selectmen minutes of 7, 10, 18 with the clarification of the number of votes required for the planning board election. Second. For appointment. All right, moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Um, item two, resignations. Mr. Catino. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, that we put out extra thank yous to Austin Spang, who's done a great job on the uh, Historical Commission and also Jessica Fleet for, for doing a great job on uh, on the Board of Appeals. Absolutely. Both are very tough jobs and they hung in there and just really thank you very, very much. Absolutely. I've served with Mr. Spang and he's been on that board for a really long time. We're going to miss him in town, so I agree. All right. With that noted. Make um, a motion to approve uh, number two. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Um, and finally, item four, 
entertainment special temporary alcohol license, Bloom's Brews and Beer Barbecue Special Event, Western Nurseries 93 East Main Street. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a special temporary alcohol license and entertainment license from Peter Mezzett on behalf of Western Nurseries Incorporated for its second annual Bloom's Brews and Barbecue Festival to be held on Saturday, September 8, 2018 from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on the grounds of Western Nurseries, an admission fee of $10 online pre-purchased and $15 the day of the event will be charged and all proceeds from this event will go directly to the annual Dana-Farber Jimmy Fund Walk. Mr. Ted Stone. Yeah, I just wanted to take a quick second <clears throat> and mention uh, uh, Peter Mezzett and his family. What a, um, so I've, I've gone to all these parties that he's had, and he does, a, he does it very, responsive, but, but very responsibly, but he does a very, very fun party. It's a very involved party. And, uh, to see Peter carry on the legacy that that, um, that his folks and his family does moving on to this generation and, and maybe teaching it to his kids, it's nice to see uh, Pete becoming the, the pillar of the community that, that, his, uh, that his family has been. And um, I, with all my heart, I, I, uh, I support this. Pete does a great job, and we're lucky to have someone like him in town to do stuff like this. So um, I'd like to move to... Uh, Accept consent item number four, uh, blooms, brews, and barbecue events at Western Nurseries, as written. It's okay, I'd like to chime in a little bit. Well, um, first or sec uh, second? Okay. Second. Okay. Mr. Nasrullah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a fabulous uh, idea that you're, you're you know, having this big party. Um, I just wanted to add that, uh, you know, barbecue also includes beef and <laughs> chicken. Um, there's an entire Muslim population in the town that would probably like to attend as well. Um, so expansion of the menu might be pretty cool. <laughs> but I, I'm in favor of this as is. Any yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I echo what has been said, and I also want to mention just looking through permitting teams, comments and all. I know the police and the fire, I want to just double check with you on a few things. But in general, when you look at those comments, uh, the Mezids, they know how to run an event. Uh, it's very clear from all the permitting team comments that, you know, when Peter Mezzett comes to us with a request, uh, he's usually got all his ducks in a row, and uh, we can feel confident that it's going to be a great community event and, and well run um, because we know who's organizing it. So I, I hardly endorse this. If there are no further comments, I will entertain a motion. Oh, I think we've had the motion. motion and motion it has been seconded. Seconds. Motion is on the table All the, for approval um, of the Bloom's Brews and Barbecue event. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And oppose, it is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. We'll look forward to it. Okay. And uh, now we will return to the posted public hearing. I apologize for the delay. Um, this is a posted public hearing from Hopkinton Friendly Services, Inc., Section 15, Package Store, Wine and Malts License, 92 West Main Street. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a Section 15, Package Store, Wine and Malts License from Nayla Ayud on behalf of the Hopkinton <coughs> Friendly Services, Inc., of 92 West Main Street, Hopkinton. This wine and malt license application request seeks to sell alcohol at the current location of the mobile gas station convenience store at 92 West Main Street. The business address of Hopkinton Friendly Services, Inc. is also 92 West Main Street. The applicant is proposing to sell wine and malt beverages Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. The proposed manager is Ellie Nicholas, the application describes the premises as one floor, approximately 62 feet by 40 feet, with five rooms, one entrance, and one exit, and having no seating capacity. Okay. Ms. Ayud, um, is, would you like to come speak to the board about what you're planning? Purchased like two pieces of land next to the gas station, 
and they get approved to put the new building. It's going to be like nice, nice, big, huge building for the Huffington town. So I've been in the business for 10 years. It's going to be my business to run. And the investment is going to be around like $4 million. So my rent is going to be increased by at least 20% from what I pay now for the company. So I need to bring more income. And uh, we don't own different gas station. We've been in the business my husband for 40 years. And we never had a citation for selling alcohol or cigarettes for underage. And it's something we've been running forever. And we know how to run it. And it's a pleasure to run the business here in Hopkinton. And some of you are customers there. And uh, I do my best to keep managing the business as well. It's going to be like always my policy to do the best for the business and for the customer. So I do need to bring more income. And we usually, every gas station, we need to sell coffee, we need to sell cigarettes, and we need to sell beer and wine. So I do need badly to get the permit so I can increase the store sales, so I can afford paying the increase of the rent. But, but just point of clarification, the license, the package store license you are requesting is for the current old location. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, I think, the same address. Now, Mr. Kamalo, am, is my understanding correct that the license does not, uh, when the new location opens up, this will be a new location. So if a license were granted to this particular location oh, today, it would not transfer over to the new facility. Is that correct? It, that is correct. In other words, the board is reviewing an application for an alcohol license, section 15, for the existing premises. I think it's going to have the new building. It's going to be the same address. Uh, the, it's like if it should be only for the existing building now. Correct. Change it doesn't matter if it's like the same owner, the same company. You will need to come before the board when that happens. So it's procedure. If I took the approval now, it would it be like it's a matter of like another process coming here and move the permit to the new location? It's a similar process. You'll need to go through a public hearing process before the board. Madam Chair. So but don't we have a footprint issue specific to this situation right now, though? Because I think the footprint she's referencing is for the new facility. No. The current facility? I believe the diagram that was included in our packet is for the existing okay. facility. I'm clear on that. So, Very small. Um, so I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get the permit because to get myself ready to have the approval so I can start uh, selling alcohol the beer and wine now and then I can keep doing that with the new building. That's my intention. So I got a couple more if I could. Nice to her. So, how many of these licenses do we have left? Every time we have this come before us, we always ask, and it always seems like there's one more left, but then more keep coming in. So, how many do we have left? Section 13, I believe it's four. So oh, section 15, I believe it's four. So we still have more. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when is, the, when is the plan to close the current facility? and go through the construction and open the new facility. How's that going to all play out? They, I was talking to them, to the company today. I believe they're going to start, they're anxious to start because they get the permit like sometime, anytime soon. They're going to start like, I believe they're going to start building or working from the new land, from the tenant's house. They demolish the house and start working and then I don't know when it's going to be time to demolish my building and uh, Will there be a period when your build, when your business is actually closed? It's going to be less than a year. The new building should be done. But there'll be a period when your business will be closed yeah. while they finish the new I space so, so and then you reopen. Yeah, okay. Okay. And that's when we'd have to reapply and go through this all again. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. You know what? When I took over the business like nine years ago, I came to the town and I asked if I can get uh, the beer and wine license, and it wasn't uh, available back then. And um, like a few years back, I tried, and someone told me that was not that in case we had it. wasn't uh, available back then.
I don't know when to start, like we have these uh, like licenses like four. I didn't know we had uh, I had the chance to apply for it unless the project came up and I so I like I thought I should ask one more time for the you know, one license. Who's the chair? So, no, so then your intention is to get a license and hold it so that when you open the new facility that you can bring the, new, the old license to the new one? No, I don't know. I can start uh, selling as soon as I get the permit, the license. I can start selling uh, in my store now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, keep, keep doing that with the new building. Well, I think right. I think what we're saying is that no, you need no. to come back. No, no. You need to understand. If a license were granted tonight, it is only for your existing facility. When you move into the new one, you're basically starting over so with a new to, license application. To my license, the one that you approve it to me and you gave it to me today. It is only for that existing building, that existing facility. What happened to the license if that building is gone? The license is defunct. So we just go you back, into the, town's it. Go back into the town's inventory the and count, you, but then we come potentially come right back out to the new you facility. would have to right. apply again as a new license but because the, the, percent, the percentage for this license would be available like a few months from now for me. through the chair the board cannot speculate on that the board can't speculate on that. Yes. But let's, but let's play this through. Let, yes. Let's be practical about this. Yes. For conversation's sake, and we're still in questions and dialogue here. We're not deliberating yet, right? So for conversation's sake, the license tonight would be approved, okay? And then she goes and does her thing for six months while she gets her plans and site and everything going. And then she's going to close that building, and then for six months it's going to be under construction. And she could come back in and say, okay, so I've closed the building. I have a license. I'd like to create a new license for the next facility. We could have that dialogue and she wouldn't lose it per se because it wouldn't go to anybody else, right? So just practically speaking, I think if we can, if a license is granted, it could be figured out in the future. We can't guarantee it, but it could be likely figured out. Similar to like a transfer, but it's not a transfer, yeah. but similar. Yeah. Yeah. A transfer. It's, it's more of a re reserving, the, reserving the spot, right? Uh, I'm just talking out loud here again. So am I. Deliberating, but. Okay, well, if, we, if, if I may, uh, if, uh, suppose we're talking about a license for your existing small facility. Um, I have been in that facility. It is tiny. Uh, there is no room for basically any stock. Most of these convenience stores are designed as a, it's even called on the run, as a grab and go motorist type of a facility. Uh, I, when I went into the store, I think the only, you know, bulk amount of stock you were able to have is some stacks of canned soda over on a counter because you are so tight in there. So I would have to assume that the, the alcohol would mostly be sold as single serve, I mean, which is what most of the convenience stores sell. They sell single serve type things. Um, so I'm not quite un quite sure how that would fit with the needs of the community, the needs of a, of a convenience store for a single serve beer or wine. What do you mean by single serve? I mean you buy one can, single can, you buy it cold and you can go as opposed to you know buying a case or a, or a six pack. It's usually to grab it and take it in your car. <laughs> So, so could, that's, that's one of the possibilities, but they also sell six no, no, and 12 that, packs of beer. It's about selling beer and wine. I do have another store in Mary Mac, New Hampshire. Always you can sell the same amount. You can sell more beer and wine than the beverage. As I sell in my store, the monthly sale for beverage, $10,000 a monthly thing. I'm going to sell like at least $1,000 worth of beer and wine. It's always equivalent or it's more than. As for, I'm going to have vacancy in my store because I can don't move it out. And uh, whatever, you know, the store and the fountain, uh, when I have the fountain machine, I don't sell much. So it's going to be, I'm going to have more beer pool there. And uh, it's, it's good for the business. So in other words, I notice on your diagram you have, I think, eight coolers right now. Yeah, 
the plan was for four or more. So it sounds like you will be transitioning even the existing small store more away from a convenience and more into a package, a package store. If you're, if you're taking, well, you're taking over half of your beverage space now for liquor. Well, no, but your diagram says four coolers, yeah. door or more for beer and wine. Yeah. So you you be you be heavily focusing your available beverages well, on the beer and wine. That's true. Uh, so if through the chair, if we were to give them give her her license today, <clears throat> we don't have any say if she wanted to get rid of everything and just sell beer and wine. She could just sell beer and No, you could. No. No, that is not true. So we limit how much we uh, on a convenience store, on, on a on a section fifteen package store, we tell them how many cases of beer they can have in their facility. The footprint. The footprint. Right. The foot, so in the, the existing footprint, footprint if they want in their existing footprint if they wanted to have no Gatorade and just sell Budweiser. No, no. no as far as uh, Mr. Kamal. If I may, the board is reviewing a specific floor plan. If the board is inclined to f approve the floor plan as presented today, the licensee is required to comply with that plan. Okay. They cannot expand the footprint of the coolers designated for alcohol. Okay. Yeah. But, but to that point, this just shows the floor plan, but it doesn't does it indicate the Prince very small? What's in these different things? I mean, couldn't all this shelf space turn into alcohol? I mean, all these racks and all these all these coolers. She's saying that you know she could That's go four saying. coolers or more. There, you may not change the floor plan, but there's nothing to prevent the that becoming all alcohol. The chips could go away in this floor plan, and it could be. Please. This, I mean, this concept is not new in Massachusetts by any stretch or New England for that matter. In Milford, at exit 20, the mobile station there does exactly what she's describing or requesting. They have one, I don't know, four or five doors of beer and wine, and then they got Mountain Dew, and they got Coca Cola, and they got Polo Springs, and they got chips. In the, I mean, it's a small space. That's what this initial request, I think, is coming to us for. In the new store, <clears throat> it's going to be, you know, more expensive, I assume, because it's going to be a much bigger space, uh, and they'll have more there, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. But the idea of blending, and I don't think it's just buying a single Bud Light and going out and getting in your car. I mean, you can pick a six-pack or a 12-pack of a bottle of wine. I mean, it's, it's a mini package store in my mind, what we're talking about here today. So, so, but it's turning more, to, it's becoming more package store and less convenience store in that case. Mr. Well. Plus, they can't really tell the customer without the counting. They could have their beer, they could have their coffee, they could have their cigarettes. It's not like the, customer, the beer customer or the alcohol customer only uh, take only one thing. They, make it, they can take bread, they can take everything, they can buy snacks, eat snacks, all the snacks. It's not like only limited for special customers. Not if they're getting in the car and driving off. So here's, here's <laughs> to my view, though. Here's our role here tonight. Our, our, our role here is not to judge her business model. If her business model fails, that's her problem, not our problem. If her business model thrives, that's her fortune, not our fortune. So our job is to, in my view, 
look at the application before us to add beer and wine to an existing business, yay or nay? How, however it impacts the business, whether she sells chips or not, I don't care. I mean, I don't, no disrespect, but that's, that's not our issue. Our issue is do we want another outlet in town? Do we need another outlet in town, period? Through the chair. Mr. Snowstrola. Well, I don't disagree with anything that you're saying. Um, I think this application is just a little bit premature because what you're describing is saying that you want to move the fountain drinks and add a cooler. And I think what, as a board, we have to look at this floor plan and say, you know, we can approve this uh, or deny it, but it, it would be, we'd be stuck to this floor plan once you add a cooler. And I think you'd need to come back and say, okay, because no, we're, 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 it's a new floor plan. So we can, I mean, we can approve what we have here, uh, but I think what we need, what you need to understand is that this is, this is what you're limited to then. So the floor cooler door, where I ask, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna put the beers on, the, on those shelves to sell them, it's gonna be the same. If I'm gonna add, like he said, if I'm gonna add more beverage cooler, I don't need a license for that. I can do anything in my store or change anything or eliminate things or so you're saying business need. But what I'm asking, I'm gonna stick to that floor plan. I ask for four doors, this is what I'm gonna sell. If I'm gonna need okay. more doors, I'm gonna I'll come and I'll ask like what's the room, what do I need to do right. guys? Now I have more room and then we can tell me you're gonna do this and that. Through the chair, if, if, if I may if I may bring us back up to ten thousand feet. Uh, to to Mr. Hur's point. Um, I believe two years ago we got a request to put a convenience store with, this, with a very similar four coolers um, where there's, I think, a nail salon now. And, and while I think it's, it, it, it's, it's a great um, uh, revenue generator to have, to have beer and wine, right now we've got um, a full liquor license uh, less than a nine iron away and then we have we have Vin Bin just on the other side of the just on the other side of the highway, and and two years ago we thought it was too dense to have one right across the street, no matter what the floor plan was, and um, you know I just uh, you know I, I I believe that the that the density doesn't allow for the need to have uh, to have another liquor store, whether it's quick or 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 not. This is not liquor store. It's a different thing. Liquor store, one thing, I'm not going to sell, I can't sell hard alcohol. It's a beer and wine. It's what the customer needs. Every gas station has it. Every business should have it for to have more income. So, and the customer needs it. Can, can I make a procedural quest, a point, if we could, please? Yes, Mr. Hart. Perhaps we should get any final input from the applicant and then and ask deliberate. the public for any input, if there is any, right. and then close the public hearing, and then we can and have that deliberate. deliberation yeah. mm -hmm. okay. to start there a little bit. Um, I have, Mr. Kamalo, yes. If I may, just to be clear to the board and the public, you have presented a plan where you have encircled the coolers and you inscribed use of four cooler doors or more for beer and wine. Is it four, is it or more, is it all of these coolers for beer? As this moment, it's gonna be four. Okay. I'm gonna add more cooler doors. I will come to you guys and ask what procedure what should I do. But as for now, the way this floor, the store is this built, it's gonna be only four doors. Right. I have a question. Um, I noticed in our packet was the TIP certification for the manager, which is Ellie Nichols, I think. Um, and I did read your hours. Of course, there are you know, a lot of hours because it's a convenience store. So how are you going to handle um, compliance checks? I know the police had this question. Um, your TIP certified individual is not going to be there seven days a week. Um, I know when I've been in the store, as in many convenience stores, it's largely young kids work in the counter. Um, how does this one tip certified person meet your compliance? When I hire a new employee, as uh, they do their desk for driving license and coffee and social, and uh, even I will give them the ID rules, uh, the 
ages, they have to pull out and they have to, it is a form. They have to pull it out on the cigarette, so they have to know the legal age and it, the same thing, it is a form and make them take it, they even notarize the form. To take it to somewhere, they can notarize it so they make sure they read what's in the form, what's the legal age, and uh, if someone talks it and like it, there are some symptoms you can tell the customer has to too much of them so they don't sell it to them. So every employee has to be trained too. Not one person, everybody who comes on board, any employee, they have to know the rules. So that's why we've been in business forever and we never had a citation for selling anyone underage or cigarette or alcohol. So we have to make sure that's part of the management to make sure that your employee knows and be trained first. So they have to notarize that form that they know the legal age and what they should know about selling the alcohol. Mr. Kamalu, if I may, um, the other liquor stores in town, are all the employees that work at the other liquor stores in town or package stores or any place that sells alcohol, not restaurant related, but, but retail, are they required to be TIP certified, each employee? In my it's not like I send them to training school. One person, I don't need to be the manager to get that training class. But my job for every employee to make sure they read the form and the legal age, anything related, that they don't have to need to do those training, no, we don't need to do that. We, the town requires the manager to be chief certified. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure that we keep you to the same standard as everybody I else. Do have it. No I greater, no less. Yeah, I do have it too. So if I understand the procedure correctly, then as long as the manager is TIP certified, even if that manager is not on the premises, um, that that's adequate. It's a requirement that the manager be on premises, or else the lockers containing alcohol should be locked. Okay, so the manager is not going to be there seven days a week until eleven o'clock. That's where my issue is. So then, other people would have to be tip certified. They would have to be. Yeah, I mean, Miss Ayud is talking about going through training and knowing the rules, but that's not the same thing as tip certified. TIP certified is a specific alcohol yeah, server. Be, uh, the thing is, it's no problem. I can ask whoever they come, like whatever work in the, the night shift, they can be, they can do that. And those people, they're going to be changed, but it's going to be the, the thing, they have to be, uh, the, they have to have the same thing as the manager, I can send them to do that too, to get that class. Not a problem. Um, could I also ask where your status is with the uh, filing fee with the Board of Health that was filed in, in March? I noticed in our, in our packet there was a note from them that that was still outstanding. That fee I sent it to the company. I think it's not, if it was for my business, I would pay it. I don't care. But I assume it was uh, part of the permits with the company. And I sent them that email and they told me they paid it. They pay everything. We'll we'll need to check through that. It was in in the packet that it was still outstanding. That's okay. I can pay it. Yeah. I can uh, send them. Uh, they can invest the money. It's not that it's only out of fifty dollars. I can pay it now. No, I understand. I have now one question. Uh, why you were talking about it? Yes. So if now I apply because I'm limited with the cooler door, uh, I just want to like convince only for cooler door to sell beer and usually wine. Nobody like in the small store. We don't put it in the cooler door. We usually we have a small display, like two foot display, to sell warm wine. Usually it's gonna be more for the beer. But uh, what if I decided if I add more beverage cooler door in my store because the vacancy of the Dunkin' Donut now I'm gonna have more room. What if I wanna add more beer, uh, uh, beer, more beer cooler door? So what should I do? So I you can do the hearing again? It'll be an uh, amended floor plan. It, it correct. And in fact, the form that you signed when you, up, you submitted your application clearly states, I understand that any physical alterations to or changes to the size of the area used for the sale, delivery, storage, or consumption of alcohol beverages must be reported to the licensing authority and may require the prior approval <coughs> of the licensing authorities. <laughs> so 
so, excuse me, Mr. Kamala, to clarify that, you said may require prior approval. So in other words, she would come and make an application for an amendment and that would be the approval? It, it depends. If the conclusion from our initial review of the application is that this is a new premises, as has been discussed so far, mm -hmm. it will require a new application process. Right. However, if she comes in and is altering the location of the coolers in the existing premises, it's called an alteration of premises application. And would that include if she was not altering the location, but she wanted to add, say, instead of four cooler doors, six cooler doors, just increasing the number, that would, that would be the same? That, that's still considered be an alteration. That still comes to us. Still yes. come to us. Are there other questions on the I'm board? I'm good the applicant, but I'd be interested to see if anyone from the public has got any input. Public, public input. Any comments? Okay, it's all quiet. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that we close the public hearing. All right. Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearing, which means that no new information can be brought in, no additional questions can be asked. The board will deliberate based on what's been presented. All right, motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Okay, we will discuss this. <coughs> um, and, and I just want to point out um, as Mr. Kamalo shared with me earlier, um, under the town's approved alcohol policy, it specifies the following standards the board may consider. Standard, in reviewing a license application, the Board of Selectmen shall determine whether the public need and the common good will be served by granting the application. In doing so, the board may consider one, the number and location of premises for which licenses are currently in effect. Two, the nature and character of the operation proposed. Three, the suitability and fitness of the applicant. Four, the qualifications of the proposed manager of the premises to be licensed. Five, any anticipated impacts of licensed activity on the community, including but not limited to traffic and noise. Six, any anticipated impacts of license activity on the character of the town or the neighborhood. Seven, any potential harms resulting from licensed activity. Eight, the applicant's compliance with state and local requirements and these policies. And nine, any advisory reports received by the board from the police department, the fire department, the director of land use planning and permitting, the director of municipal inspections, the board of health, or the treasurer. Um, collector. So the standard is whether uh, it will meet a public need or serve a common good. So that is to be considered by the board. I read that a little differently. Um, I th I read just reading that as, it as verbatim here. Yeah, I, mean, I took that to uh, those are things that we can consider when we exercise our discretion. Correct. The, the, those, the, those are, it says, it says um, may consider, but the standard is in reviewing a license application, the Board of Selectmen shall determine whether the public need and the common good are to be served by granting the application. Could I ask a couple questions? Yes, to her. Um, so we don't have, Mr. Kamala, we don't have any other convenience stores that have a license at the same time in town, do we? I'm trying to think of one. I don't. So yeah. store, right? No, reason. neither neither of our two have. Yeah. I think this would be the only one. Okay. Yeah, maybe the the Waterfresh just gave theirs up. Did they? Well, it's all yeah. part of the yes. land. <coughs> right. well, we've got country farms. So country the farms and, and uh, um, So companies. for me personally, honestly, I, I see this as co-mingling marketing. I think this is the wave of the business future. Uh, and I think the community, frankly, would be well served by granting this application. It's, it's done everywhere else. Why is, why, we don't have any in Hopkinton. It's, it's different than 
a VIN bin, which is highly specialized and you know, very sophisticated in its business model, I think. And it's different than Star, and it's different than Startline. I mean, it's different. It's a convenience store that's going to have a few six packs of beer and a couple bottles of wine. Um, I, I just see it as it's, it's commingling business one-on-one, I think. And I do think it's the future. So I personally support the idea. I don't think we're ready to grant tonight, frankly, because I think there's some unanswered questions, and I think there's some things we've got to sort out. But once, if the board were to be comfortable, I would be a, a yes vote. Can I just say one thing, guys? So no, no, the public hearing is closed. I'm sorry. Through the chair. Ms. Uh, Dinesterl. You know, when we're, when we're looking at the question of does this serve a public need, I think the hours kind of distinguish this from the other package stores in the area. So, you know, if you come home late, you know, fly in at a, at a late hour, and you want to have a beer when you get home, you're out of luck. Presently, if uh, we had a store that stayed open, I think there is a need that you know people would like to get some beer right after 10 o'clock. And to your point, the package stores aren't staying open because they are specialized, and it's just that. Whereas this business is going to be open either way, right? Right, and it's pumping gas, and it's selling milk, and it's selling soda, and it's all the other stuff too. That's why I see that, <coughs> as a, frankly, as a public good. I mean, you know. I, I don't want to get into a debate, a debate about whether or not people should drink beer or wine. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the access points in the community, I think it's limited inside the model that she's describing. Well, I'll play the devil's advocate here. Um, I, I am not comfortable with this. Um, I guess there are some convenience stores around that do offer this kind of thing. Um, neither of our two in town, Country Farms and Cumberland Farms, do. So I anticipate if this gets, these goes in, we should be hearing from them as well. Um, I've also looked into other convenience store setups um, in other towns, and I haven't run into any that did sell alcohol, largely because they tend to cater to drivers, people on the road that are grab, grabbing a sandwich and a cup of coffee or a sandwich and a soda, but they're not going to be grabbing a sandwich and a beer. Um, there is a package store literally across the street. There is the vin another wine and wine vendor, uh, probably less than a half a mile to the west. There are two package stores. I think it's 1.2 miles. I looked at it into town. So it's not that there is a lack of ability to purchase. Um, and, and I'm not making a pro or anti-alcohol thing as much as in terms of serving a need there is is ample access um, but I will say that the type of facility these on-the-run driver services right next to the highway um, I don't particularly like the combination of alcohol being there to serve the highway driving population that that's what it feels like to me i know it maybe isn't the intent so you don't go to new hampshire very often <laughs> um i i don't i don't think it's a good fit for this location and i know the the facility is very small right now and um you know i i just don't think it's a good place for a package store i don't think it it's a common good i don't think it serves a public need so so i, I disagree mr ted stone so I, I can see things both ways here. Uh, I, I don't think it's up to us to judge if, if someone wants to go in and even if they want to go and have one beer, it's not, our, it's not our job to say it's promoting drinking and driving. It's, it's the onus of the person who's buying it to follow the rules and regulations. I liken that thought process to if you're going to buy an eight cell on a car, if you're going to buy a Ferrari and the speed limits are only 65, why would you need to have a car that would go that fast? Um, that said, I think that we have, um, like you said, we have the, the package store across the street. We have uh, two across the street from each other, a couple hundred yards from here. Uh, we have plenty of other places in town that sell alcohol. Um, nationwide, this is a policy go to Philadelphia um, or anywhere around the country, there are convenience stores that sell uh, 
beer and wine. Um, and I just think about the impact it would make on some of the other businesses mm -hmm. that have those licenses in town. Um, same way if we were to say, let's say uh, CBS decided they wanted to sell gas. Um, there's a perfectly good gas station right across the street from, from there and a mile down the road there's two. So would we, if they had all the setbacks and requirements, would we offer CBS to sell gas? Or Dennis Katz, who's Hopkins and Drugs, they're playing when we put gas tanks in there. Um, so I don't think it's our job to decide Like you said, the business model, as far as um, do we have, you know, are we going to be oversaturated? That's that's the, the business owner's risk. If there's going to be a, a saturation um, of of that particular industry in a certain area, if it's going to if it's going to overpopulate it, it's going to you may get a few more sales, but some of the other businesses may lose out. Um, where they'll have to find more interesting ways to, to sell uh, more beef jerky or gasoline or cigars or whatever. So um, I was initially against it, and the more that I think of it where it, where it is kind of a, a demure, um, smaller um, um, business, that, you know, it's not going to be, you know, a, a wine place in Natick that sells I've had cases and cases and cases. It, it's going to be people coming in, and hopefully getting a 12 pack and going right home and sitting in front watching the Red Sox beat the Yankees. Um, I don't think it's going to be getting a 12 pack, jumping in your car, driving down 495, and opening up your funnel and killing the 12 pack before you get to Melbourne. I hope. But it's not for me to judge. So uh, I guess I would, at this point, um, be in favor of the, uh, of the license. I, I've got to stick to my guns that, that two years ago we, as a board, actually voted mm -hmm. unanimously, I believe. We as a board uh, uh, two years ago voted unanimously, I believe, that um, to not... Um, there was more than two. I wasn't on that board. No, I was too. You were? I remember that. Yeah. We said you know, I remember that. that we decided against the package and, story um, idea in well, that location. And, and because, of the, because of the density. And it was a business that said they really needed it in order to start the business. And, um, and then they ended up not even going in because they, they really wanted to have beer and wine. You know, it, it, it's, okay. I, 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 I believe in, 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 its present, it is, in its present configuration, uh, to, to Mr. Nasrullah's point, I think it's premature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it's four or more coolers, what's, you know, it's as it expand when, when, when Dunkin' Donuts leaves, you know, maybe we can revisit it again when the new building is built. But, you know, if two years ago, I, you know, I, I, I believed that it was, that we have um, uh, a full liquor store right across the street and a beer and wine uh, um, less than a quarter of a mile away and then two more full, full liquor licenses a half mile away, you know, if we've, we've got enough liquor stores. I, I guess I would add to your point too, we probably need to look ahead to figure if this is allowed, we can probably assume that the convenience store across the street in all likelihood will ask for the same thing, which, you know, then so we're kind of looking at just the bigger picture. Do we, do we want that all in that area? I mean, it, that's a likelihood that there will be two, not one. Um, Cumberland Farms. Cumbies. Cumberland. Oh. No. So you're, you're probably going to get two in addition. Um, may I ask, Mr. Hur, you made a comment that you felt we were not in a position to make a decision tonight because there were other things that needed to be we worked out. The Board of Health and some payment. And we have to, it has to be a clean application. It does. You can't say or more and stuff like that. So I'm kind of hanging conceptually here a little bit. Um, but I would perhaps suggest that we table this until the applicant and the offices that need to make sure we're clean, uh, in fact, may get us clean, and then we can kind of go from there. I would the check for me. I can write about the check for the $150 fee. I would welcome the check for 150 bucks. We can't take the check tonight. <laughs> we're not no, the treasurer. 
Um, one other outstanding thing I know to, to the uh, you know, identification check, I know the police said they wanted to review the plan for yeah. compliance, checking identity and, and tip certification and all that. They were not um, on board with the identity check part of it. Right, right. So to your point, you know, that's another piece that I, I would like to get a clear, clean positive from the police because that's a big piece of my concern. If, if I may, I think they did. I, I remember... It was not in the permitting second. team comments. It was still outstanding okay. from what was sent to us. I believe John J. Potter may have sent something this morning. Give me one second. You know, perhaps while Mr. Kamal is looking at this, another thing to, an angle to look at this, because I was just, it just came to mind as I was thinking this whole process through, it's almost like we could do a probation here of sorts, because we know the building's going to change, and we know that that site is going to completely change, and then all towns coming or whatever it is, and it's going to be a much bigger venue a year from now. So we could put this in place, and we can see what happens over the next eight to 12 months and if all hell breaks loose, then you know, we, don't have to, we do not have to do another license and grant a second license or a new license to a new facility if we don't like what went on there. And if we do this and you know, other businesses go out because of it and things like that, I mean, we'll get some hard evidence here pretty quick. I don't see that happening at all because I think this clientele is wholly different than the current stores and towns clientele. This is the getting off the plane. Oh my gosh, I'm wired. I'd really like to have a beer in my <coughs> fourth quarter here and go to sleep, but I don't have any Bud Light at all. That kind of thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. a different. I think it's a different play, but we have an opportunity to put it in place, watch this thing for a year. We know that store is going to close. We know it's going to go to a new location. We know through tonight's discussion they have to come back and reapply fully for a new license, and we can say yay yeah or nay based on the you know the the data points we have looking in the rearview mirror for the fact you know, that that year that we're going to have this thing out there. So just an idea to kick around that maybe is a little, it, it's a probationary period of sorts that we could use as well, which is not always going to be the case when we do these things. In this situation, it is the case. In fact, Mr. Kamala, did you get more information? Yes. I, to Mr. Brian's last point, Mr. Hess' last point. Call me Brian. The yes. renewal process is in November, December. So the board will have an opportunity to review this much earlier than in one year. So that's one. Number two, uh, John Porter, um, Lieutenant Porter did send a message this morning. It reads, I met with Mr. Nicholas yesterday and inspected his policy and spoke with him regarding his identification checks. I am satisfied with the policy that they have come up with. The police department has no other issues. Thank you. Is it possible to make a vote conditional upon uh, payment of the fees that are outstanding? Or would you have to have that all taken care of ahead? In fact, based on the town bylaw, the, 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 the permit will not issue without that permit having been made. The yeah. license will not be issued. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So it would it would be held until everything is is. So right. didn't we have a similar problem when 110 Grill opened up? We had given them a liquor license for one address and a change to another address and made it invalid and hmm. that's why. They didn't move. I don't know. I had a beer there the other night. It seemed okay. <laughs> yeah, but the soft opening. I didn't go to the soft opening because. They, they had a liquor license issue, so they had everything was, was uh, issued, but they couldn't sell because it, the address changed. So it wasn't necessarily a clean application for one. Now, I know that 110 Grill in a, a package store are completely different applications, I'm sure, but alcohol is alcohol. Yeah, there was, an, there was an address issue regarding one license, I think, along Lambert Street. I don't remember whether it was 110 or the tennis club. Yeah, it was 110 Grill. Yeah. 
All right. I think well, we have an yep. issue with the application as well in that the, the floor plan says four coolers or more. Mm -hmm. um, could we vote and say, you know, submit a new floor plan, or do we need a clean? I mean, I, I think I tend to think we need a clean application to vote. Um, but being the newbie here, I need Just a little. Put that okay. in the motion and say it's exactly cool floor coolers. Period. Yeah, and, and in fact, if I may throw the chair, I I did ask the applicant, and, and on record, she did state that it's four coolers. Mm -hmm. All right, well, in the interest of the hour, um, are we ready to entertain a motion? Mr. Hur, you're pretty good at making motions. <laughs> um, having said that I support it, I will make a motion to approve the uh, wine and malt license for 92 West Main Street. Uh, contingent upon uh, a written um, floor, a, a, a revised floor plan to state four coolers, period, mm -hmm. and contingent upon all fees being paid, obviously that would be the case, um, and that when it, the new store is open, the process will begin anew. I'll second that. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there further discussion? One, right. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. One question just popped into my mind. Is there anything in this license that says their beer needs to be sold cold? So they'll have four, four, door, four coolers, but what if they were selling warm 30 packs? Is that allowable? I'm, I'm not being it's, a wise guy. I'm just I'm it's asking. A, it's allowed. It is allowed? Yes. So the only so that you could have the four coolers and, and then stack of it. You could have. You have display one display. Okay. Uh, 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 oh no no! To, to be clear, to be clear, okay. his question is not intended to allow you to place beer else anywhere else other than what is specified in the floor plan. Again, if you're going to alter the floor plan where you locate your beer, you will need to come before the board. There is a reason why the board needs to confirm the floor plan. You cannot place the beer in such a manner that you are not able to monitor who's taking the beer. That's why the board needs to see that plan. Yeah. So I included a couple of the contingencies in the motion specific to this sort of discussion. Um, and I know technically, you know, the floor plan is the floor plan and, and the, grant, the license is not going to be issued to all the payments are made, et cetera. But it's also the message to the applicant and to the applicant's partners and whomever that we're going to try this and see how it goes, right? And it said four coolers. It didn't say four coolers and 58 stacks of Bud Light everywhere else, okay? It said four coolers, and that's what the application says. So we're going to walk before we run in my motion, and then we're going to revisit all this when this place closes, which we know is happening, and it get expanded, and then we'll start anew and, and see how it went. And if it doesn't go well, then I'm not going to support it the next go-around, frankly. But I don't want to limit the business right now as we experiment with this, if you will. It, and if I may through the chair, see, my, my fear is that, and that's why I got nervous with the four or more coolers, is that with the departure of Dunkin' Donuts, and um, I don't want this to become a liquor store that also sells other things. So we're going to have a fly-through liquor store that sells other things when we have, full, we have a full um, licensed liquor store, as I said, uh, 100 yards away, it'll even be closer. It's going to be, um, you know, 150 feet away. She gets four coolers, John. That's it. I, I, okay, I, but I, I know it just. Uh, it and she can just sell beer and wine. So here's how this plays out. And it's this is how it plays out from an enforcement perspective. She gets four coolers per this application and per this vote tonight. 
if we go in there three months from now and there's four coolers full of beer and there's all kinds of other stuff in there, you walk into the town manager's office and say, I want to put it on the agenda with the chair to pull that license because she's in violation of what we discussed here tonight. That's how it works. We can pull a license anytime we want. Just as, as, as we grant the license, we can pull a license if they're in violation. And there's a clear discussion here about this is a l very limited uh, application and a very clear process for what may play, may play out down the road, but we're going to revisit this all over again. But from what I heard tonight, would the app, if the applicant decided they wanted to add more, whether it's coolers or start stacking them up in the aisles, there is a procedure for that, and it would be to come back for an amended application. So what's basically happened in that case is the camel has its nose under the tent. You start with your four coolers, and then you go back and you say, I want to make this a stack of beer, and I want to make this a stack. And um, you know, next thing you know, it's, it's, it's a full-fledged package store. Um, which started out as four coolers. I recall the hearing that we had that Mr. Cotino refers to a couple years ago, and it was presented as a grocery store that would be selling liquor. We started to look at the floor plan and see how much was consumed by alcohol, no pun intended, uh, and I remember someone saying it's a liquor store masquerading as a grocery store. And I don't, it's one thing to be selling a few in a cooler, I'm not even happy with that, but I am concerned about this turning into a full-fledged package store, and I think, I think the camel's nose under the tent is what happens, and the possibility is there, and I don't think this is the right place for it. But you, not to sound cruel to the camel, but you get to kick the camel in the nose and it sticks his nose under there because we decide whether they add stacks of Bud Light. They don't I, I'm just saying, Mr. Herr, once you get started, then it, it, it's just the next step, and, and it just... It's a, it's a slippery slope. I think it doesn't have to be a slippery slope because we get to look at it again. Every anytime she wants to change it, anytime she wants to expand it, we get to look at it again. And if we think, like Brian was saying, that we, I mean, we have a, a trial period where we can take a look and see, is this, is this working or not? And if, if we think that expansion at that point is a good idea, we would say yes. If we think it's not, we can say no. All right. Is there further comment on the part of the board? Okay. There is a motion on the table. It has been seconded. Um, would you like to read, Mr. Kamal, could you read that motion back just because it's been a while? I'm trying to approve, yeah, the motion from Mr. Hayes to approve the Section 15 Wine and Malt license uh, at 92 West Main Street are contingent on a revised floor plan uh, being submitted to the town, uh, depicting four coolers, uh, f and all fees owed to the Board of Health paid, and that if a new store uh, is developed on the property, that the process for applying for the license will be followed. Those are my notes at least. Right. Motion has been made and seconded. All right, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? No. No. All right, the vote is three to two in favor and it passes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're a little behind schedule, but not too much. Um, a street name approval for the trails at Legacy Farms. Is there a representative from Heritage Properties here? There is, oh good, thank you. Okay, we have street name approval. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a request from Louis Gigliotti of Heritage Properties for street names in the trails at Legacy Farms, the new 55 and over adult community located on Legacy Farms North, approved by the Planning Board on May 1st, 2018. The proposed street names are Clubhouse Lane, Bandon Lane, Burkdale Lane, Weston Lane, and Waterville Lane. Mr. Kegliotti, I know these have been changing almost hourly. Uh, are, they, are these the five <laughs> names tonight? <laughs> that was one string. Uh, thank you. Uh, speaking of the names, I'm not strictly. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I thought you were going to be yeah, here. No, that's right. He's, uh, he submitted all the, the paperwork. And, and uh, you, 
you My are. My name is Ben uh, Gately. Thank you. And I represent the trails, and I'm the owner of Heritage Properties that is the developer of the trails. We call ourselves the Trails of Hopkinton, even though we are physically within the Legacy Farm Master Community. That's Hopkinton. We are trying to. Uh, <laughs> We are trying to uh, establish our own brand. We are completely different than the Pulte communities. And now we serve a completely different uh, market, 55 and over. And we have a completely different model on how we construct uh, homes for our, uh, our buyers. We do all the customization work, um, which again is again, different than what is happening uh, throughout the, the rest of the legacy community. Um, we have been doing site work for about 30 days, and we are about 30 days away from completing binder on about 700 feet of road, which would then give us safe access so we can start construction. Um, we're doing this in phases. We're doing 40, 41 units in the first phase, and that first phase is uh, basically the 41 closest units to Legacy Farms North Road and um, on the, uh, the names that we've gone back and forth on, um, Weston Lane, Clubhouse Lane, and Burkdale Lane are all within what we refer to as Phase 1. Uh, Bandon Lane and West uh, Waterville Lane will be Phases 2, 3, and 4. I promise you building these roads will be easier than naming them. We get quite a back and forth. Um, I think we thought we had the names um, soon after we submitted them. I think it was July 11th. And then I think last week, just in advance of getting the agenda out uh, for this meeting, we saw that there was some uh, confusion with the names being similar to other names. Mm -hmm. So the names you have there are, uh, are our final names. Um, I would just also add that Western Lane has been named for our sponsor. Uh, we have a community garden on the site for our owners as well as a dog park. The community garden is being sponsored by Western Nurseries and we hope to have a, a real good relationship buying lots of our plants and things uh, from them. So we gave them sort of name rights to to the lane that's closest to the community. Um, so Weston kind of makes sense because it harkens to the Weston nurseries. Do you know what the derivation of any of these others are, Bandon or Burkdale or Waterville? Um, they don't seem to have much connection to our town. Right. Um, they're actually golf names. We expect to have a, another relationship with uh, Weston we also think that uh, a good percentage of our owners may be golfers. We're not sure yet. Um, so I'll pick some names. Clubhouse Lane is named because our clubhouse, which is the first building that we intend to build, that's the, uh, it's about a 4,000 square foot building right closest to uh, Legacy North Road. So <clears throat> because our post office and Clubhouse is kind of Clubhouse Lane, we name it such. The other names are, uh, are golf, famous golf courses, if anybody has golf in uh, Ireland or Scotland. So, you know, they recognize some of these names. But we found, again, we, we went through lots of names and some of, some of our first places, in fact, we went through probably 20 names before we got what we have here. I know you said a relation with Western Country Club. I think you meant Hopkinton Country Club, did yes, you? Yes, sorry, did I say that? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know if you had some special arrangement. No, no. Okay, Western. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I like Spyglass, but I guess. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, and, and I'm just one person. You're probably not the, the, the originator of the names. Um, with all the Legacy Farms development, um, what they did was to hearken to 
the use of that property for so many years, which was Western Nurseries and the beautiful nurseries and the, the outstanding growers that they always were, um, and chose a selection of botanical names throughout local New England variety botanical names. Um, I, I do know you're trying to set yourselves apart, um, but I am sorry not to see that continued. Um, I, I don't quite understand the golf thing. Um, I guess it's okay, but it doesn't have a whole lot of connection to our town, uh, nor the area where it's built. And there's an awful lot of botanical names out there for the choosing, except sawgrass, which grows in Florida. But um, so, you know, that, that's just my feeling. I know you want to get this done. Um, I, I, I'm, I would like to see the names with the exception of Weston have some meaning to the town. But that's just me. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I mean, like I have a strong opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I, I like the golf. I, I like the Weston Lane. I get it. And the others that's tied to the country, whatever. But yeah, I, um, I don't think there's anything in here that's offensive, like that no. can be construed as offensive to anybody. Um, and they all seem pretty benign to me. So I don't, I'm fine. They're not offensive, but we're going to have these for a very long time. And I know you're in a hurry, but no, this is permanent. Well, I, I, I have read that they are anxious to get going, yes. and you're certainly building nonetheless, whether the name is secure. Yes. I still think it would be a good thing, because this is permanent, to have something that matches Hopkinton. I see Mrs. Slammon wa uh, waving her hand in the back, so. <laughs> Through the chair, I just, I just appreciate the, the, the patience that you know, I, I saw all but I think Clubhouse and Western Lane change four or five <laughs> times in the last week, and I just think that they, there was a lot of patience. You know, it, 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 it's sort of like the, the uh, I think the argument you and I had when we were on the planning board, when, you know, um, if somebody wants to open up the purple shutters in, and then we say to them, well, no, we're, we're Copton, we're green. We, we would like you to be green, but we like purple. You know, and so there's certain things that, that, you know, if this is the flavor of the, of the, that they want this, you know, we have to think of this, this over 55 um, active community that they'll have a, they'll have a, a relationship with Hopton Country Club. This is the, this is the, the mojo they want to have there is, is golf. But I it's not it's on the golf course, Mr. Catino. Actually, I would just say that um, these names will pretty much disappear. These will become important to the owners as far as their address. But we're named the Trails. That's the name of our, our project uh, development, our community. And I think that has a very um, direct tie into the area. Uh, we have a, there's a trail system of I think 15 miles of existing trails throughout the 1,200 acres of Western Nurseries that our owners will have access to by just walking out their front door and not having to get into a car and drive 10 minutes to a conservation area. They'll also be able to pick up trails mm -hmm. off of mm -hmm. the Western Nurseries property that lead to everywhere. So I think that that's really the, the key name for marketing and I think that, that directly ties into that area. Well. And it's very subjective. It, 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 it is. Uh, I, I would counter and in support of my concern. Um, we have looked at all our developments as with, with a one Hoppington concept to the point that we have uh, consistently in recent years, I would say 15 to 20 years, um, not allowed naming of developments once once the units have been sold, that, perm that temporary marketing sign comes down. Everyone lives in Hopkinton. Every street is a Hopkinton street. Every person is a member of the Hopkinton community. They're not a member of the trails. The trails that you reference have been a gift to the town by the Legacy Farms development. So um, I understand the desire for exclusivity, but at the end of the day, um, everyone at the trails is a member of Hopkinton, and each street will be a street within our town. So um, they are private, but they are rep they are members of the Hopkinton community. It's a Hopkinton it's yes, a Hopkinton absolutely. way. Um, so uh, 
Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the names of Clubhouse Lane, Blandon Lane, Burkdale Lane, Weston Lane, and Waterville Lane for the uh, trails at Legacy Farms. Second that. Are there other board comments to be made? So for me, just to be quick, I, I, don't, I don't know. My concern when you're naming streets is that you don't have, so you, none of your streets are, are similar to the streets that we have in town now. Mm. So I don't want to see a Pleasant Lane. I don't want to see a uh, Grove Avenue and a Hayden Lane, uh, you know, Hayden Ave. Um, I care that these are, are distinguishable. When you call the, the police or fire and say, I need help at Burkdale Lane, they're gonna know that it's Burkdale Lane and not think Maple Ave, Maple Ave Extension, Maple Street, which we do have, or Elm, Elm, Elm. Uh, we have three, three different three, Elms. Three different so, Elms. <laughs> so that's my concern. I don't, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm the, the most pure Hopkinton historian uh, outside of Mrs. Wright in the room probably. and. And yeah, I'd love to see Walter Brown Avenue and you know blah blah blah. But uh, it's we don't have we can't make you do that. So the fact that I don't know of any other streets in Hopkinton that that are similar to this, I don't have a problem with that. All right, motion. except maybe Slam and Lane or something like that. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a couple other people that have yeah. a little more history than you. <laughs> any other board comments, questions? Not in town. Okay, motion is on the table, made and seconded to approve the five names as submitted, Clubhouse Lane, Brand Bandon Lane, Burkdale Lane, Weston Lane, and Waterville Lane. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, no. It is four to one and you are good to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and a little behind schedule, sorry, but uh, we have a Hoppington Family Day banner. This should be quick. Uh, this is click. Speaking of Hopkintonians. Mr. O'Brien here. And Mr. O'Brien. Okay, so the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a request from the Friends of Hopkinton for a banner to be hung over Main Street for Hopkinton Family Day on September 15, 2018. Board of Selectmen approval is required for banners over Main Street in accordance with zoning bylaw section. 210-179C, the banner may be displayed for up to 14 days and may not exceed 75 square feet. Mrs. Click and Mr. O'Brien, have at it. Family Day, number one, and also September 15th is being such a celebration for Balliots, closing the center school. There's also the Woodsman Show, and of course there's the um, Marathon Guild um, uh, film show. So it's a busy, busy day. Um, but we're still sort of partial to the Family Day. <laughs> so we're, we're asking if we could have our band. Yeah, well, I, I, if I may, through the chair, I, I helped push to get the banner up last year, <clears throat> and, and we just squeezed it in towards the last minute. Mm -hmm. So it's just good that uh, we're starting a little bit earlier good to uh, get the approvals. You guys do an awesome job. Um, these last couple of years with the family day and the fireworks and, and the activities, and you're doing a great job. You're, you're you're, you're on the way of making Hopkins great again. We like it. <laughs> Mr. Herr. I was going to vote for it until he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I'm all good, thanks. Yeah. I think any, any activity where you're bringing the community together is fabulous, and I think uh, it's a credit to the, to the community. And unlike the previous two applicants, I am not going to give you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's a great day. It, you know, it, oh, yeah. You know, I had to remind uh, Father Cannon on, on Sunday that uh, they were going to have that. That's why they pulled the, mm -hmm. the party. They were going to have a party that night. And I said, do you realize that's the fireworks night? He said, oh. Yeah. I'll make a note of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Let's Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the Family Day banner as written in our second. 
All right. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the banner for Family Day. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to say, um, we thank the town for taking um, the role last year and making the banner. Mm -hmm. and, Ooh. and taking it down. And we well, have no idea where it is. <laughs> We're looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, yeah. Too bad. the town happen to know where the banner is? Oh, that's the banner. So yeah. we're asking permission, but we don't quite know where the banner is. We'll find it. You'll find it. Okay. We'll keep looking. <laughs> we were looking for these chairs today, believe it or not. <laughs> Seriously. Uh oh. Okay. Do you know of any retired cops that may be able to sniff it out? Because I know there's one in, in this room that had a pretty good job of sniffing things out when he had them. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, exactly. Thank you. Good okay. to see you. Yeah. I didn't realize he didn't have the banner. <laughs> All right. Um, we now have annual appointments by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will continue making appointments to various boards and committees and appoint town officials for various terms. First on the agenda, board and committee appointments will be the Council on Aging, the Marathon Fund Committee, the Permanent Building Committee, Planning Board of Representatives to Open Space Commission and then we will be appointing special police officers and uh, FY19 election workers. So we'll start with board and committee appointments. And first up is the Council on Aging. Um, there are a total number of members, uh, nine on the board. Uh, we have two openings that we'll be appointing tonight. One is a full member, one is an associate for a three-year term expiring in June 30th, uh, 2021. Uh, and we have two applicants. A new applicant is uh, Carol Slammon as uh, applying to be an associate and Nancy Draw uh, applying to be a full member. So I see them both here. Oh, it's, it's Why don't you come on up, kids? Come on up. Oh. Yeah, introduce yourself. Sally is not applying. She's next. She's next. <laughs> <laughs> Just introduce yourselves quick and uh, tell us a little about your interest. And I know Carol, you're you're new on this, and Nancy, you've been a member previously, correct? Oh no, you're both new. Okay, sorry. Oh, new people in town. <laughs> new oh. ones, fresh blood. Um, my name is Nancy Draw, and I have been involved with the senior center in a um, volunteer capacity way, um, way back since um, the new building opened, and way before I was even senior. Um, in many aspects, I was um, I worked in, I taught um, classes in the um, the computer room. And uh, I, uh, for many years, I wrote the columns, the news columns for the, um, the news media in town, the three different publications, as well as um, um, Hub News. And I also did um, uh, news broadcast for HKM TV, all about the senior center. And I did that for quite a few years. And also, I'm still doing the um, lunch, um, post the school lunch. And, um, I hope the years I've met so many wonderful people who be, and loved everybody. Um, actually, uh, Mr. Kino's mom, for one, she was like a little angel. Yeah. And uh, so you, you just keep these people in, in your hearts forever. And um, since uh, they just, um, since there's been a couple openings in the Council of Aging, and we were asked to um, become board members, I was actually kind of happy because now I can continue my capacity as a volunteer in another way, something new. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, in a couple of next years I can add to my, um, you know, help focus to the senior center. Excellent. And I'm happy to do that. And Mrs. Lamond, do we know you? <laughs> She's a volunteer. I'm Carol Slamond. I've been volunteering at the senior center for years and years. And, um, well, since I've been a senior, time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was honored to be asked to be on board. And I'm sure I would be of great value. 
Well, I happen to think that for that board in particular, people who are really connected with the community and know people and are known and understand our community are, are, are perfect, would make perfect members. So I think you guys are, it's, it's great that we have you both being willing to volunteer. So I have an email, uh, the present fire chief uh, said to be cautious with this appointment, uh, take trepidation. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> um, At least with one of them. So I've known both of these two for a very, very long time, Mrs. Slam and much more, uh, much more than, uh, than Mrs. Draw, Ms. Draw. Uh, I know them, they're both very pure, they're both very pro Hopkinton. Um, we, as a town, are very lucky to have people like this uh, willing to step up and volunteer. So. Uh, I, uh, I support these people as much as I possibly can. I will entertain a motion to appoint. I would like to move that we appoint Punky Draw. Miss, uh, nope. uh, sorry. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to do the same thing. And Mrs. Slammon uh, to the uh, Council on Aging uh, as, as uh, written where... Punky wants to be the associate. Yeah. No. no, no, Carol's the no. associate. Carol's the Slammon the full. will be the associate and Nancy Draw will be the, uh, the, full. the full, full member. Is there a second? Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you. Mrs. Slammon, we could perhaps bring a little butterscotch sauce back to the uh, senior breakfasts or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very much. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. Time. Next up is uh, appointments to the Marathon Fund Committee. This board has six members. There are two expiring terms. It is a one-year term expiring in June, June 30th, 2019. And we have three applicants for the two spots. A new applicant, Sarah Viadero and reappointments sought by Colleen Charleston and Carol Nathan. So is anybody here? Please, okay ladies, please come up. Tell us a little about yourselves. Hi, I'm Carol Nathan. Hi, Carol. And um, I'm applying for reappointment. Okay. Um, I've been with the Marathon Committee since 2008 and it's been an honor and a privilege um, to be part of this committee. We've done um, so many wonderful things with so many organizations in town, including the Senior Center and Family Day and um, many others. Um, I think one of our happiest days is always our scholarships, our high school scholarships. And um, we have a very good relationship with our sister organization, the Marathon Committee. And um, I'd be honored to be reappointed um, again to serve on this committee. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Done great stuff on that committee. Very proud of you. Mm -hmm. And? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Sarah Villero, and I am very new to Hopkinton. We just moved here about six months ago, so I'm just looking for ways to get involved. Uh, I'm the director of community service at Leslie University, so I'm just looking for ways to get involved. I'm the director of community service at Leslie University, so this committee really appeals to me given the high school to college pipeline. It's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I also give the scholarship, so it's kind of the, the part for me. Uh, I ran across my career in high school, I in college, so I really have a love for um, asking and thinking about that, um, but also the community connections. I do that for work and thought it would be a great way to give back to the town that I'm part of now. So. Excellent. So we have a little dilemma here. Dilemma? Because we have two fabulous people that have been doing this for a period of time, one of which couldn't be here this evening because of another conflict, uh, and then we have a very highly qualified wonderful smile, high energy person ready to go. So it's a little bit of a tough one mm -hmm. for us. Um, I would be inclined to take a new volunteer and put them in a different spot per se uh, and keep our th that committee in place that's really done fabulous work for Hopkinton. Uh, but that's no, that's just one voice at least at this point. Uh, but that's no um, uh, 
That's the word I'm looking for. Slight. No, no, yeah, no slight to you whatsoever, Sarah. I think I, I love the fact we've got a lot of new people moving to Hopkinton and coming in this year and looking to volunteer as we set up all these positions for the fiscal year, which is a great challenge for us to have. But it does present a little bit of a challenge from time to time. So if, yeah. from my seat anyway, if you can be patient with me, we'll find a spot. But I, I really, with, uh, with the Marathon Fund Committee, uh, these folks have done such a great job. And it, and, and they know it well, and it can get a little complicated at times, frankly, because there's some rules and regs around it. And some of our former colleagues were very good at looking into those rules and regs and yeah. some stuff that goes on. So um, I just think this would be a tough one to go right into right away, but I'm glad you're back. Um, I have a question. Um, so we have six people on our committee, and sometimes it might be difficult to form, and I'm wondering if we opened up another seat and have seven so I'm surprised to hear we have six because yeah, it's typically odd. odd. It's usually an odd number. That's, uh, a, that's odd. odd. Yeah, it would be odd that we that's don't. Odd. It would be odd that's it's, odd that's odd that's not odd. <laughs> um, yeah. So through, if I could through the chair, Mr. Yeah. Kamala, that something doesn't make sense there to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about this one. In, in fact, Mrs. Nathan is very, very humble. Uh, she has not mentioned that she's been the chair of this committee for a while. And one of the, one of the many projects that I worked with you on previously was, to, was an attempt to revise the charge uh, for, for this committee. So we can revisit that project. And well, I recall that discussion, yeah. but I don't recall the number being an issue. Is there six on this committee? Is that, in fact, the case? Huh. Just to Let us check that, because maybe there's only six showing up. And no, there's six. There's six. Yeah. So while you're while you're checking that, uh, I had a chance to work with Mrs. Nathan on the um, um, the six. high school went to to her or to to the fund and to uh, get some money for the um, new backstop and everything like that. <laughs> very very accommodating, very knowledgeable, um, and she was very very easy to work with. Um, <laughs> And I also, I did get an email from Colleen Charleston today uh, stating that she's up for the Marathon Fund Committee. She's unable to attend. Uh, she wanted to let us know how much she enjoys being on the committee and would, would love to be reappointed. So. Uh, she checked in with me also. Okay. <laughs> she so Colleen Charleston she seems to be somewhat thorough. Colleen has As a Doyle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering, is, is there a, um, an opportunity to create an associate position to particular? Well, until we particularly if Mrs. Nathan is saying that sometimes they have a quorum issue, it would be really nice if some other boards have an associate that can slip in. So with six, they have to have four. Yeah. With seven, they have to have four. So if we went to seven, it would give them a better shot. At right. Can we do that on the fly? I believe in, we can. In, Mm, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Here's why. Um, there have been previous attempts to um, rework the charge. Uh, therefore, I think my recommendation to the board is if you could instruct or direct the town manager to revisit that topic. Because what I'm also realizing is that, in fact, our records show that the committee has five members, not six. Okay, now you're really confusing me. Exactly. So, so we really want to So there's only supposed to be five? Five. Wait, you just said the marathon committee is supposed to have five? Marathon fund. Marathon fund, fund committee, fund. yes. Oh, so this okay, then, Oh dear, then now we're really the confused. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we have the town manager mm -hmm. with the utmost haste <laughs> look into um, the charge and the um, number of members, et cetera, et cetera. So, so Mr. Hart. You're going to make a motion? <coughs> we have four liaisons. We've got Parks and Rec, School Committee, Board of Selectmen, and Marathon Fund Committee. Are the four liaisons and then two members. So liaison is yeah. different than okay, so a voting member. Okay. Yeah. So let me just hang on for one second. Yeah. So I, w I will. So I'm going to second that motion. I'll second it. Okay. So I'll impose that motion. I'm opposed to the motion because I don't think we need to reset the charge of the committee. The charge of the committee, a lot of it comes from the BAA yeah, that's and right. the funding sources that we get annually from them and the contract we have with the BAA and 28 other things, right? I'm all for checking into the size because obviously we are highly confused about the size this mm -hmm. committee is supposed to be. 
Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, actually, that I don't know. Um, so I'm all for directing the town manager to sort out the number of the committee members and what's a logical number of committee members, but I'm not necessarily in favor of changing the charge of the committee, which right. no. organize, no. uh, okay. vet, and then recommend to the Board of Select and payments for certain activities based on the BAA contract we have. The makeup. Me, can they, could, you, Me, could, could you modify my motion? If, I'd like to take the if, motion. If I, so let's take the votes so it fails, so your motion fails. Just oh, fuck. If, if, <laughs> come on. Yeah. If, if, I'm, right if, I may, if I may, if I may, um, I think this discussion presents a couple of opportunities. One opportunity is to look at the membership. The other opportunity is to actually review and provide definition to the activities that the committee can fund. Remember, we've gone back and forth on this issue and we've always said there is lack of clarity in terms of what the committee can support. However, there is some wealth of information that has been built over the years and we want to build that into the new judge. That would be my request to the board. You think that would be helpful? That would be very helpful. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Never mind. I won't vote against it. Okay. Was it seconded? Has it was it? seconded. So can someone read the motions on the table? <laughs> Let me say it again. <laughs> yeah. See, you were so busy arguing. You need to get close. the town manager look into the charge and the number of members on the Marathon Fund Committee. Okay, so we're going to hold off on all the appointments, including Mrs. Nathan right now. We're just going to well, hold this. No, I think we can proceed. We can. Proceed her? Yeah. Yeah, I think we can proceed with the, um, with, so with putting the, at least two on. I mean, we're going to put two on, and then if one comes up, then the third person would come back and reapply for the third open. So, yeah, because these are two separate, mm -hmm. it's a whole true. separate motion. Yeah. In, in fact, if I may, through the chair, th there may be a simple explanation as to why there's some confusion. There is a board of selectmen liaison to the committee, and the committee may be counting that person. Per the charge, the selectmen have no seat on the committee. They That's simply correct. have a liaison. Yeah, so I have yeah. been the liaison in years past, and we have this discussion about liaisons every now and then, and a couple of times they've said, well, you don't come to the meetings. I'm like, well, you don't ask because I'm a liaison. I'm not a voting member. Um, so vote. maybe that's what some of it is. And I John, voted them. Do you vote? Yeah. You're supposed to vote. vote. I'm supposed to vote. <laughs> so you have been in violation of state ethics yeah. laws. I love it. <laughs> 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 we got him. Yeah, we all Sarah walks in, the new person in town, boom, blows the whole thing up, and John's going to jail. <laughs> yes, I mean, I think, I think she's a troublemaker. Look at what she's done. <laughs> oh, do we not have our act together? Okay. So the motion that is on the table and seconded is for the town manager to quickly review the charge and get back to us with the correct number of members. Yes. All right. So now we That's, have to vote on We're not going to so. vote on members yet. We're going to vote on the review of the charge first. Right? Yeah. Yes. That's the yeah. motion. Yes. It's on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That motion has been made and seconded for a review of the charge. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. That is unanimous. And now uh, we can move to make two of the, the appointments and hold off on determination of a seventh seat, perhaps. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Colleen Charleston and Carol Nathan to the Marathon Fund Committee term expiring 6 30 Is second? Second. There is a second. Okay. <laughs> Made by Mr. Gattino, seconded by Mr. Nasrullah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. So thank you, Carol, and to Colleen, who's not here, and Sarah will figure this out and take it up. <laughs> <laughs> please reapply. You made a profound impact on the town tonight. Thank yeah. you. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> You've already had an impact. In a very positive way. You, you really helped us here. <laughs> Going to tell Mr. Catino's voting habits. <laughs> I don't vote on. on no, I'm not working. He's like Kramer from Seinfeld. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let you go. Well, I don't even work here. 
uh, we have an appointment to make to the Permanent Building Committee. This board <laughs> apparently has five members, we hope. <laughs> uh, there are two expiring terms. It is a three-year term expiring June 30th, 2021, and right now we only have one applicant, uh, a new applicant, Mr. David Godfrey, so there will still be another, uh, another unfilled vacancies. Mr. Godfrey here. So, Madam Chair, I'd like to move to put David Godfrey in the Permanent Building Committee with a term expiring 6.30 of 2021. Second. Motion made and seconded to appoint David Godfrey to the Permanent Building Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. Uh, the next appointment is uh, to the Open Space Preservation Commission, and this is a designated planning board representative. The board has five members. Uh, the planning board is asked to provide a representative. It's a five-year term ending <coughs> June 30th of 2023, and Fran DeYoung, a planning board member, has volunteered to serve. So um, I will entertain a motion to appoint Fran DeYoung to the Open Space Preservation Commission. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. Now, uh, we have special officers to appoint. These are all members of the communications department. This is for a three-year term. And the three individuals are Mr. Kevin Reese, Farai Sithol, and Ryan Riley. May I have a motion to appoint these three? So the, the only question I have is normally when we, per, when we put special officers on, Chief Lee is here and gives us the okay. He's not here, so we should just assume that he's put this stamp of approval on here? Y yes, and uh, Chief Lee is out in the community hosting the night oh, out right. for the department. Family, family that's right. Yeah. All right, so I'd like to move to put uh, Kevin Reese, Farai, Sethol, and Ryan Riley on as special officers for a three-year term. Second. Okay, move, uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. And the appointment of the FY19 election workers, this is a one-year term, and uh, this will be to appoint the following individuals. Karen Edelman, Mary Arnott, Bob O'Claire, Kathy Eau Claire, Mary Ostagai, Veronica Billado, Louise Bracchi, Colleen Charleston, Ann Click, Susan Conway, Donna Deneen, Samantha Dings, Louise Donahue, Nancy Draw, Richard Dugan, Liz Edwards, Mary Lou Ellsworth, Russell Ellsworth, Grace Grady, Leonard Holden, Jennifer McMillan, Mary McRobert, Carol A. McCagney, Joanne D. Morgan, Mary Morrissey, Barbara L. Picard, Joyce I. Plucker, Jean C. Warden, Mary P. Woodward, L Linda DeBona, Ralph Given, Sheila Frackleton, Mary Jo Lafreniere, Menakshi Barat, Dorothy Pine, Melanie Smith, and Joseph Frackleton. Is there a motion to appoint the members as, as stated? So moved. Second. And motion is made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, and that is unanimous as well. Okay, so, we're not too far off. Um, town manager's report, Mr. Kamalo, first the approval of the Metro West Veterans District Agreement. Mr. Kamalo. Yes, um, I'm respectfully asking that the board act on the Metro West Veterans District Agreement in three steps. The first step being renewing the town's participation in the Metro West Veterans Service District. Uh, that district includes Hopkinton, Ashland, uh, Medway, and Holliston. The second step would be um, the board approving the changes that are being proposed to the service agreement uh, between the four towns and the state. And then the third piece would be the formal approval of the 
district agreement should the board be inclined to approve the changes proposed. Uh, the changes proposed um, were included in the packet that was sent to the board and they include the following. And these are the changes to the district agreement between the towns and the state. Uh, change number one, we are identifying the location of the district's office uh, as having moved from Ashland to Holliston. We now have great offices um, that have, uh, we're sharing with the Park and Recreation Department in Holliston. The second piece is we are correcting that the district agreement renewal is biennial, not annual. And then thirdly, uh, we are also replacing the district budget uh, in attachment B uh, with the budget that was approved for FY19. So again, three-step process, renew the board, the town of Hopkinton's participation in the district. Second step, approve the changes that I just outlined. And then thirdly, approve the uh, district agreement between the towns and the state. Any questions? Mr. Kamala, is Ray in on all this and the approve the changes? Um, per the agreement, the review of legal documents is in the hands of the uh, Hosting Towns legal attorney. I have discussed some of these changes with, with Ray. Is the yes. Hosting Town again? Holliston. So Holliston's going to make sure it's all over. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm fine. Yeah. Thanks. Well, to Mr. Hur's point, then, are we in a position to approve it tonight if it's still under legal review? No, it's been reviewed by uh, Holliston Settlement, the and, and so, they are fine. So they're, they're good with it. Okay. Yeah. And I think, as you can tell, these are minor changes. Yeah. All right, is there a motion then to approve the uh, Metro West Veterans District Agreement as presented by Mr. Kamado? So moved. And, and if I may, the motion will reflect that the town is also renewing its participation, step one. Number two, approving the changes. Mm -hmm. And three, ac accepting the district agreement as presented. Okay. As, as so described. Okay, uh, that has been moved and seconded with those uh, Clarifying additions by Mr. Kamalo. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. And that is unanimous as well. Liaison reports and board invites. Uh, this is right. I need to stop the meeting. It's 9 o'clock. I need to tell my kids to go to bed. That's the rule. I was told that. Uh, no, you just told them I now. just told them to go to bed. Okay. I've been told that. Uh, Sometimes they don't listen to their mom okay, when the well, meeting runs a little late, so it's time for the kids to go to bed. If you want to get out of here and put them to bed yourself, tell us your liaison report. I'm good with liaison okay. reports. School <laughs> 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 going to be open. Mr. Hur, anything? Bed, rats. <laughs> I have nothing to report this evening. Mr. Nazarella. I have nothing to report this evening. Mr. Catino. I actually had a very nice meeting today with the, um, the CEO and the COO of the, uh, uh, of the BAA. Um, just... Uh, Starting the conversation for, uh, for so uh, hopefully we can continue with the uh, the good relationship we have with them. And move on. Good. Okay. I have nothing new this evening. If so, I may, Mr. Malo, yes. I want to acknowledge the participation tonight uh, by Deputy Ch uh, Chief Miller. Nicely done, Deputy Chief. You'd like to say a few words? Or you're all right? All right Thank you for being here, taking good care of us. Tom, I have a chance to put him on the spot. I like to do it. And the town clerk. And the town clerk, that's so right. Got your election worker, you should be all set. <laughs> all right, and finally, uh, future agenda board items. Does anyone have anything they would like to bring up at a future meeting? I'll start down this end, Mr. Nazarula. I do not. At this moment, I um, I'd like to um, again bring up that we uh, really have to uh, look at the uh, DPW uh, strategic plan and to see where uh, trees and um, uh, poison ivy abatement fit into that, as uh, as well as uh, looking now that we're moved back into the town hall, 
looking into uh, uh, parking issues um, so that we don't disrupt uh, our neighbors. Okay, Mr. Herr? Nothing at this time, thank you. Good. Miss, oh, you're good? I'm good. Okay. Um, I have two things. Um, at a later date, uh, we need to discuss and approve the revised Keefe, um, Keefe Regional Technical School Agreement. At a later date. At a later date, yes. At a later date. Yeah. And I would also just like to add, um, there has been before this board quite a bit of discussion about trails, various trails, the trails process. And at one of the meetings, we did promise members of the public that we would be taking a look at the procedures in town, talking about maybe centralizing the process or um, having more discussion on the trails process. So I don't want that to be forgotten. Perhaps sometime in the fall, uh, we can get back to people with either an update or perhaps to decide time to talk about the process and uh, how it can be more open and inclusive and, and responsive going forward. We're working on that. Okay. So if there's nothing else, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We sign in? Yes. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. What are we signing? <laughs>